Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. The divine words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Gospel lesson this morning give us such depth and insight into our life in Christ that we could develop these 10 verses in a whole sermon series. But first of all, Jesus echoes the words of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 1. And he pronounces a very serious woe to the one who would cause someone to sin through temptation. Jesus even goes so far as to say that it would be better for a millstone to be hung around the neck of the one who had caused someone else to sin. Wow. What a word from Jesus. A very strong warning from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Especially when you consider the teaching of Jesus last week about the irreversible condition of the rich man. Indeed, we ought to pay careful attention to ourselves. Every Christian bears their own responsibility for their relationship with God and their fellow human being. At the same time, every Christian, according to the words of Jesus this morning, should warn, or if we want to use his word, rebuke anyone about their sin toward God or their neighbor. And insofar as it depends on you, do it with gentleness and respect, lest you too fall into the devil's trap of pride and arrogance. Never does the Christian speak the law of God so as to delight in exposing their neighbor's sin and rebellion. So really, we need to ask ourselves the question, why? Why does our Lord Jesus Christ call us, his disciples, to warn, to rebuke their brother or sister in Christ about their sin? And ultimately, its temporal and eternal consequences. If this act of love is not something we should delight in, then obviously it is for the sake of their eternal salvation. Therefore, we speak the law of God in love, with gentleness and respect, so that our dear brother or sister in Christ can repent and receive the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ, crucified for that specific sin being called out. At the same time, we should also make a distinction between those who are repentant and unrepentant, penitent and impenitent, those who have a contrite and remorseful heart, opposed to those who willingly defy the law of God and have a total lack of concern for their actions and behavior toward God and their neighbor. Therefore, the law in its severity and fullness must be shared with those who are unrepentant, impenitent, and willfully defiant against the law of God and have absolutely no desire to change and alter their behavior and actions. Anyone who resists and rejects God and other authorities in their calling and life harms another human being with their words and actions, has a serious addiction to pornography, is a serial thief, one who likes to gossip, craves, or covets things, places, and people that are not their own, they do not need to hear the gospel. What they need to hear is the law. They do not need to be confirmed in their sin. And rebellion 
and be told that's okay because Jesus will forgive you anyway. As we learned from last week, God knows the hearts of every human being, and he knows whether or not your heart is contrite and remorseful, or if it is defiant against the law of God and impenitent. St. Paul put into the mouth of Jesus, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. You see, in love, Jesus calls his disciples to warn their brothers and sisters about their sin and its consequences, not to tolerate them. And the sole purpose of why one should rebuke another is all for the sake of the gospel, so that the sinner can repent and receive the forgiveness of sins that Jesus accomplished on the cross for that specific sin. When our conscience is stricken by the law of God, God the Holy Spirit is at work through that law of God to bring us to repentance, to have a total reorientation of our life, to have a change of mind, a change of heart, turning from sin to forgiveness, darkness to light, death to life. And therefore, a warning, a rebuke, according to the law of God, is a very good thing because it drives us to repentance and forgiveness in Jesus. It drives us to the gospel. It drives us to Jesus who came into this world to suffer and die on the cross for sins, to rise again from the dead for our eternal life. For each and every time we break the law of God, Jesus came into this world to die on the cross and forgive it all. Be it a violation in our relationship with God or with our fellow human beings. It is absolutely necessary that the gospel be shared, announced, proclaimed, and declared to all sinners who repent with contrition and sorrow for their sins, so that they, along with all of us, can be comforted with the gospel, with the forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ crucified. Distinguishing between the law and the gospel in their fullness and purity is a very difficult task because at times we may be too harsh with the law of God. Well, at other times, we may overlook the law of God. We may refuse to speak the law of God lest we offend someone. Or we may not speak the law at all, and only the gospel, which, in the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, becomes cheap grace. And so if the law of God is not shared then what really is the purpose of the gospel? If the gospel is to forgive sins, then what sins are forgiven? And for that matter, what sins are being confessed in order to be forgiven? If the gospel saves you for eternal life, then what in the world are you being saved from? When applying God's law and gospel, in their fullness and purity, Dr. Martin Luther said, Hence, whoever knows well this art of distinguishing between law and gospel, him place at the head and call him a doctor of Holy Scripture. Ultimately, we live under God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ, the gospel itself. While at the same time, we're not ignorant of the law and its consequences, both temporal and eternal. And therefore, we ask our Lord Christ Jesus to forgive us our trespasses with the hope and strength that we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness cannot be removed from the life of the Christian and the life of the Christian congregation. And that is why we fervently pray Forgive us, O Lord, so that we can apply your forgiveness to our family, to our 
congregation and to our community. And by Christ's forgiveness, our faith is increased. The disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. Through the forgiveness of sins, our faith is increased. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ, St. Paul wrote the Romans. Faith can only be increased, strengthened, and renewed by God, the Holy Spirit, who works in and through the word of God and the visible words of God, the sacraments. If your desire is to increase your faith in Jesus and his promise to save you eternally, then read the Holy Scriptures daily. Attend the services of God's house. Participate in one of the Bible studies that are offered. If the word of Christ is the very greatest treasure here on earth and faith can be increased through this word of Christ, then why in the world would we not want to take advantage of these opportunities? And we have to emphasize that word want. Because if you feel as if you are forced, coerced, or obligated to read the word of God daily, to hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it and take it to heart, then more than likely you're not receiving that word of God from the right perspective. If it is a chore to attend the services of God's house and read from the sacred scriptures, the Holy Bible, that we consider the greatest treasure here on earth, then more than likely we are not viewing the word of God and the services of God's house as the greatest treasure given to us here on earth. You see, the more and more we avoid the word of Christ and his eternal gifts, the more and more we drift away from him and our faith in him. But the more we treasure and take these eternal gifts to heart, the more our faith is increased. It is like a log being removed from the fire. It has to participate with all the other logs within the fire so that it can stay illumined, aflame. In the same way, we need to participate in the fellowship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and His eternal gifts with other fellow believers to be illumined, to strengthen our faith. When we view the Word of God for what it actually is, which it is the greatest treasure here on earth, then we will begin to have a different perspective on attending the services of God's house and holding the Word of God sacred and gladly hearing and learning from it each and every day. When viewing the word of God as the greatest treasure here on earth, we will begin to say that we get to attend the services of God's house. We want to. We are blessed to attend. We are privileged, encouraged, and honored to attend. Those are different words than forced obligated, must, have to, better. We don't use those words when we think about coming to God's house. We have to have a different perspective. We get to, we want to, we have the privilege to, we are blessed to come to God's house and receive his eternal gifts. And by receiving this greatest treasure here on earth, which is the word of God, and the visible words, the sacraments, our faith is increased in Jesus. And we then naturally do what God commands of us, because through this word of Christ, Jesus abides in us and we in him. The LWML and their theme this year says this, from the apostles' words to the Corinthians. Called to reflect the light of Christ who lives in me. What a marvelous theme that is. You see, we can only reflect that which is given to us. And when the greatest treasure on earth has been given to us, 
has been applied to us in the word of God and the sacraments of God, we indeed reflect the light and life of Jesus Christ to others. And we begin in the words of Jesus today, forgive as we have been forgiven. In our daily callings in life, we are unworthy servants of Christ who only do our duty because we have the joy and privilege to reflect the eternal love and forgiveness that Jesus has first shown to us in this troubled and fallen world and in the mess of our own lives. So whether you are a part of the LWML or not, we are all members of the body of Christ and his church. And we are called to reflect the light and life of Jesus Christ, who lives in me and who lives in you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran, or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.